Welcome to this video where we would be talking about securing your applications which you built with Spring Boot. So you build web applications with Spring Boot. You would have built REST web services with Spring Boot. How do you secure them with Spring Security? That's basically what we would be looking at in this specific video. We'd be looking at it in five different steps. One is the setup. Second one, uh, like setting up a basic application, we'll use Spring Initializer to do that. The second one is to create a small web page. I mean, just some dummy page which we would want to secure. Next is to create some dummy service which we want to secure. It would be a REST service. And the th fourth one is to configure Spring Security and see what default security it brings in. It would bring in basic authentication. So we'll look at it in detail. And the last one is to how to do custom security configuration. So if you want to create users roles and you want to protect URLs, how do you do that? So those are the different things. In this specific video, we will try and go through steps one, two, and three very quickly because we would want to focus on four and five. If you have questions on one, two, and three, you'd find a lot of articles on our website, www.springbootutorial.com where you'd find uh, more details about these three steps in detail. Let's get started with setting up a simple web application. We're going to use an article uh, from our website, www.springboottutorial.com to illustrate the example for you. So what we want to do is, uh, if, if you're new to Mavo and Eclipse, Spring Boot, Spring MVC, Spring, I mean, we have great courses for all of them. So I would recommend you to check all of them out. How do you start with initializing your application? start.spring.io that's the best place that's called spring initializer go there and just create a simple project so for a start we are not going to add in security so we would add in spring security at a later point in time so we would add in web actuator and dev tool so you just need to type in web here you can add that security actuator and dev tools and enter a group id of com in 28 minutes dot spring boot the values are here and student services as the artifact that's it so Click generate project, it would download a zip. You can import that uh, zip into uh, Eclipse. So what you can do is extract that zip content to a folder, go into your Eclipse, do a file import and type in existing Maven project. You can type in existing Maven projects, the last one in here, you can type in Maven as well. So you can click next and choose the folder where you extracted it to. So let's say I extracted it to some folder. Put the folder in here or browse to that folder and you can click finish once you have it. That's it. That's all you need to be able to import the project. So it would take a little while before you would have the project ready because it would be downloading all the dependencies it needs. Once you download all this stuff around it, you are ready. So basically, following, these are the steps. So you enter a group ID, artifact ID, choose the dependencies you want. Web is the Spring Boot Starter Web, which is kind of the default to develop web applications. You also choose Actuator and Dev Tools because those are cool stuff, which uh, will uh, you can look into the de Actuator is basically a simple thing to provide monitoring around your REST services. Dev Tools helps you to develop applications very quickly. It kind of reloads the applications very, very fast. So we select them always. Once you click Generate Project, download the zip, file import as Maven project into your uh, local uh, Eclipse workspace. That's it, you'd be ready. So once you do that, you'd have a simple application set up, something of this kind. So you'd have a simple student services application is the name of that which would have, and you would have an application.properties and you would have a pom.xml. These would be the files you would have at the start. To run this application, you can do a right click, run as, Java application. That's all you need to be able to run the application. We would want to start setting up a simple web application. So what you need to do, do is to go to your pom.xml and add in this dependency, Tom, Tomcat Embed Jasper. So the reason is because we want to use JSPs and if you want to JSP, use JSPs, then you need to add this to your pom.xml. So we have it already in our pom.xml. I'll show you where it is in this specific project. So I have added it in here, Tomcat Embed Jasper. So you'd need to add it similarly to your project. This is needed because you would need to be able to uh, run JSPs. The next thing we are doing is adding in a simple login controller. So what I'm doing is I'm putting simple, I mean, if you know Spring, this should be easy. If you do not know Spring, uh, sorry, Spring MVC, then I would recommend you to watch the video and understand Spring MVC. In, I mean, we are not going to 
really discuss everything about Spring MVC in here. So what we are adding in is a simple login controller. This acts as a web page for us. So I'm adding an init controller. I'm mapping the root request to it. I'm putting something into the model with name in 28 minutes, and I'm redirecting it to welcome.jsp. And welcome.jsp is a simple JSP which just shows the name. So welcome dollar name. That's all it does. And the if you know Spring MVC, then you need a view resolver as well because I would want to put this in the folder source main web app, J web app JSP. That's where I'll put this JSP in. So I need to configure a view resolver so that it goes in there. So web app JSP and dot JSP. Prefix is this, suffix is that. So when you redirect to welcome from here, the view resolver says, okay, I want to prefix this. So slash web app slash JSP. It will take welcome and add dot JSP. So it will redirect to slash web app slash JSP slash welcome dot JSP. And that's when this JSP will be uh, shown. So if you run the application, right click run as Java application and run HTTP localhost 8080, you would see something of this kind. It says welcome in 28 minutes. So that's because we put this into the model, the name into the model, and we are using the model in here. So this is what you should see if everything works fine. Now that we added in a simple web page, we also will add in REST service to the same application. We don't really want to create separate applications for web and REST services. Ideally, I mean, if this was really production code, then I would not recommend you to do this. So you need to have your web application separate from your REST services. This is kind of a simple video where we want to just get you introduced to Spring Security. So we are kind of taking a shortcut and adding a simple REST service to the same thing. So what we want to do is to add in a little bit of business logic. So I'm creating a simple service. I would want to create a simple service that would return a few details back. So when I execute uh, localhost, so I would want to be able to re retrieve all these courses that a student is at uh, registered for. So when I type in localhost 8080 slash student slash student one slash courses, I would want to retrieve all the courses of student one. That's the service we are creating right now. So I want to be able to say, this student has courses on Spring and Spring MVC. And also the course details are coming in. So you can see that the ID is course one, name is Spring, description is 10 steps, and the different steps as part of that course are also in here. Learn, Maven, import project, first example, second example, and things like that. Same is the case for Spring MVC as well. So this is the service we wanted to create. So to create this service, we'll have a couple of modal objects. One is called student, and the other one is called course. And we'll also have a student service, which will be able to retrieve all the details of the service. So that's kind of pretty standard thing. So all that we would have is uh, retrieve courses for a specific student. So we have some business logic. So we have hard coded something in here. I mean, this is just hard coded data. We are not really talking to a database or anything in here. It's just hard coded data to create a simple service. And you would see that the uh, controller, REST controller, uh, for slash students, I mean, this is called a path variable. So whatever value we pass in here, so we, we are sending a student one here, so that will be mapped to this variable. So that becomes the path variable here, so student one. So it would go and retrieve the values for student one, and it would return the list of courses back. So when we are, this list of courses would be converted into JSON by something called message converter, which is part of some Spring Boot auto configuration. There's a great article on Spring Boot auto configuration on our website. So you might want to be checking it out to understand how auto configuration stuff works. So uh, now that we have the uh, service ready, so when you go and invoke the URL, you would see that this is the response which is coming back. So now we don't have anything related to security until now. So all that we have created is a simple web page and a simple REST service. What we want to do really in this particular video is we want to demonstrate Spring Boot starter security to it. So if you go to Spring Boot start, uh, like if you add a dependency on Spring Boot starter security to your project, you'd see that there would be three dependencies which would be in your, I mean, in which would be added into your dependencies. So if you go to your pawn.xml, I already have Spring Boot starter security in here. So this one, actually, if you look at it, in the Maven dependencies, just because of this dependency, I would have got three uh, dependencies in. These are the ones, Spring Boot, sec Spring Security Config, Spring Security Core, and Spring Security Web. These are all the default ones. What would happen is as soon as we add these jars in, Spring Boot Auto Configuration would kick in. Spring Boot Auto Configuration would kick in 
and it would by default secure everything up. So what would happen is if you try, uh, if you look at the log, you'd see these statements printed in. So you'd see that Spring Boot's Spring Security Filter Chain is configured to secure all the URLs, and also there would be a default security password which would be printed in. We will use the password a little later, but you can see that it's mapping a filter to all the URLs. It's creating a filter chain and a lot of stuff. This is because of auto configuration. The way auto configuration works in Spring Boot is as soon as you add in a jar. Spring Boot auto configure checks, okay, there's a jar for Spring Security. That means the developer wants to add security on top of all URLs. So I'll protect everything here. That's basically what would happen. So all the URLs which are there would be protected automatically. So now if you actually try and hit the services, if you execute a REST service, uh, localhost 8080 slash student slash student to one slash courses, I'm using Postman to execute this. So if you execute it now, you'd see that you get an authorization error. So you say you get a 401, you will not get the response back. And in the previous time, before we added in Spring Security Starter, you would have got the response back. But now it says unauthorized, bad credentials. It's saying you don't have permissions to execute this service. So that's the message that you would get if you try to hit the REST service right now. Same thing is the case with running the web application as well. If you try to run the web application, you'll get a pop-up. So if you go and try and hit localhost 8080, what you'd get is you'd get a pop-up. You'll not get the uh, welcome in 28 minutes page because by default Spring Security is auto-configured. As soon as I add the Spring Boot starter, all the magic kicks in and everything is now protected. So what is the user ID and password? The user ID and password is whatever we saw earlier. So this is the password. So if you look at your log, if you look at your console in your application, there will be something with this string present. So when you start an application with Spring Security, there would be a statement with this kind of a string. So this would be your password and the default user ID is user. Now to execute a REST service or to log into the web application, you need to have the user ID and password. The user ID is user and the password is this. So to execute this, the way I would need to do that is by using uh, basic authentication. So by default, Spring Security uh, provides basic authentication. So when I'm executing this request, now to execute this request to courses, I would need to use basic authentication. So if you go to the authorization tab in uh, Postman, you'd be able to see basic auth in here. So you can select that and type in the user ID as user and the password as whatever you have picked up from the log. And then, you'd be able to send the request and then you'd be able to see the details. This is because this service is by default protected with basic authentication. Similarly, if you want to run the web application, you need the same user ID and password. You need to enter user and the password and only then you'd be able to see the welcome page. So that's a lot of magic actually. That's a lot of magic we turned on by just adding a simple dependency Spring Boot Startup Parent. Let's take a Quick look at what we have done. So we have created a simple web page and we created a simple REST service. We saw that we were able to invoke them very easily. But then we added in Spring Boot Startup Security. And as soon as we added in Spring Boot Startup Security, we saw that there is a lot of magic that is coming in. Everything became uh, authenticated. So I needed a user ID and password, which, which I picked up from the log to execute them. So, Let's say I want to create custom users and roles. I don't want to use the default user ID and password, but I want to use, I want to create my own roles and users. So let's say we want to create two roles, admin and user. And admin role has access to web application and user role has access to execute REST services. So only admin role can access web application and user role and admin role, both of them can execute REST services. Let's say that's basically what we would want to do. And also we would want to create one user for admin role with user ID admin one secret one and one user for user role with user one secret one. So how do we do that? So what we do is we just need to create a simple configuration. At configuration is a spring annotation. So it defines that uh, we are going to create a few spring beans in here. That's basically what at configuration does. We're extending a class called web security configurer adapter. This would allow us to configure security. So that's why we extend this class web security configure adapter. And we are configuring a couple of users in here. If you look at it in here, so the first thing which we are configuring is uh, the users. So what we are saying is configure a user, user one with password secret one and roles are user. And also another user admin one secret one 
but his roles are both user and admin so admin has both the roles user and admin whereas the user has only role user so we create we are creating couple of users that's basically users to roles so here we are saying this is the user this is the password this is his role that's basically what we are doing there the second thing that we want to do is configure role i mean what role has access to which urls so what we are doing in here is we are saying any thing that has this one so anybody who wants to use slash student slash star star should have a role of user and for all the other urls you need to have, for all urls you need to have a user id of admin so if somebody has a user he'll be able to access any url which start with slash students and if admin he'll be able to access all the urls which are present in here so that's basically what we are configuring we are saying these are the users these are the roles now you would see that when you try and execute the rest service so when we you try and execute the rest service in here you can provide the uh, password as user1 and oops where do we have the user id and password so user1 and secret1 you can use it using basic authentication to execute the service and similarly to run the application you can type in either user1 uh, sorry with a user role you will not be able to access the web application but you will with an admin role you will be able to access it so you can type in admin1 and secret1 that basically what you need to access that particular thing all the code that we are using in this specific uh, example is present in here so you'd see that all everything is in here so you can uh, use this code to set the example up completely um, basically what we did in this specific uh, video is we set up a simple rest service application a simple web page we added in spring boot starter security we saw that it provided a default basic authentication and then we went and created our own spring config to define a user uh, use a couple of users and define a roles for them and then we mapped the roles to specific urls so that uh, specific users have access at in 28 minutes our focus is on making you an expert at spring boot we have created a complete website on spring boot at www.springbootutorial.com the link in the description of video would take you to a page where you find details of all the courses videos and the articles we have created on spring boot if you love our videos you'd love our courses too our courses have great reviews on udemy you can see some of the reviews in here and there are also articles on basics of spring boot auto configuration startup projects startup parent less services web application all the code examples we have maven projects which are present which you can directly import into eclipse and start running them and other references as well this page would be a great start for you to become an expert on spring boot you might also want to visit our website www.in28minutes.com all other courses other than spring boot as well thank you for all the support you are providing us we would not have grown to 52000 on udemy we would not have such great reviews on courses on udemy without your support we would not have been able to grow to 28000 subscribers and more than 3 million views without your support we want you to learn and make best use of all the courses that we have good luck and i will see you in the next video all the course until next time here's ranga from in 28 minutes signing off